it's over to Ms. Nina John. Good evening, everyone. Or should I say, hello, 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 can you hear me? Can you hear me at the back? All right. What happens when you say, hello, hello, can you hear me? That one word and those few soft sentences immediately convey a lack of confidence. Most people underestimate the telephone as a means of communication. We're on the phone all the time. In fact, when we have a mobile, we are also mobile. We have to talk and keep talking and walking when we talk without realizing that when we do that, we are affecting the reception of the voice. We are affecting the way the voice waves go up and down. We are affecting what the listener can hear. Many of the earlier speakers, Vaijanti for example, spoke about how important listening is as a skill. Telephone etiquette demands that you don't just keep talking, you must also listen. Learn to listen when you are talking, especially in your professional lives. Across the world, whether the boss is Indian, Vietnamese, Chinese, or African, the number one complaint that bosses have, my employees, my team, doesn't listen to me. And whether you are Chinese, African, Vietnamese, or Indian, the number one grouse that employees have about their bosses my boss does not listen to me. Cultivate your listening skills right now. Learn to use the telephone as an instrument of communication that will help you in your professional life. First of all, when you call up someone, ask, identify yourself first. Identify the other person and check if you are speaking to the right person, is it the right time to talk? Or convey in a few words what the gist of your talk is going to be about, how much time you're going to take, and only then start your talking. Remember, the telephone is today the most universal gadget that every one of us has. But are we using it appropriately? Are you calling up at the right time to the right person? Remember, the other person may be driving, they may be eating, they may be doing so many different things. It may not be a convenient time to attend to your call, especially if it is something important. Tell them what it's about and then talk. When you are talking on the phone, remember, we are today operating in a multinational, multicultural world. Your words and your accent may not be the same, understood in the same way by the other person. Again, to quote Vajayanti ma'am, 55, 45, is cool, are all Indian ways we have of speaking certain words. When you are speaking to a French, German, or American person. Be aware of the fact that dialects and accents do make a difference to the way you speak and to the way you are understood. Some pronunciations are acceptable both ways. In India, we have learned British English. Unfortunately, our work culture today is American English. So you can have a schedule, you can have a schedule. Both are acceptable. But understand the fact that when you are talking to someone on the telephone, you are communicating. So be careful. What do you want to say? Why do you want to say it? And when do you want to convey that information? 
The telephone as a tool of communication allows much more interaction between the two of you than does an email. Learn to use the telephone as a way of building up relationships between your colleagues in the office, between your vendors, between other people in your organization. As far as language is concerned, remember today, as I said, we are in a multinational, multicultural organization where English is the one link language that we are using. Learn to use better English, better phrases for anything that you have. Please, thank you, excuse me, pardon me, sorry, all magic words that help the other person and make it clear whether you have understood what they wanted or whether they need clarification. Assertiveness in communication. I'm sorry, I did not understand what you said just now. Please, could you repeat that? Paraphrase the conversation and say, excuse me, this is what I understood as what you said. Are these the actions you want me to take? Clarity on both sides. Clarity of your voice, clarity of your ideas, clarity of your thoughts. These are what will be conveyed to the other person. So be clear in your telephone conversations itself, what are the words you use and how you use them. Words can have a great impact. How do you put words and in which context do you use them can change every single aspect of communication. There is a story about two young American men who were training to be priests in a Catholic seminary. Now these are young American men, both of them were very, very fond of smoking. And the person in charge, the abbot, said smoking is a very bad habit, so you must stop it. Both of them refused to give up the addiction, so he said, okay, write to the Pope because he's the supreme authority. If he gives you permission, yes, you can continue smoking, or if he says no, both of you have to stop. Both of them emailed the Pope. Strangely enough, to one priest or seminarian, the Pope said, yes, you can continue smoking. To the other one, he said, no, you may not. So the abbot said, please show me the emails that you sent or the letters that you sent. And he read them. One priest had asked, Holy Father, I have this great problem with smoking. Is it okay if I pray while I smoke? And the other one had said, Holy Father, I have a great problem with smoking. Is it okay if I smoke while I pray? Is there a difference? The difference is not in the intention of the sender. The difference is in the message that was received by the Pope. Can I smoke while I pray? I am giving importance to smoking. Can I pray while I smoke? My whole being is sub so permeated with praying and love of God. So if I smoke while I'm doing that, it doesn't matter because my primary attention is on the prayer. But if smoking covers my entire life, that's what the message is conveyed. So be careful of how you convey messages, even in the way you speak and even in the words that you use. My next session will be on email writing, where I will give you a few more examples like this. Remember, <coughs> sorry. In the multinational world that we're talking about today, you know, there's a campus interview with TCS. Every, yesterday there was some news about how the CTS is uh, recruiting 8,000 people, 5,000 people, 10,000 people. When you are just one amongst those thousands of people, remember, there are only two ways in which you can make your presence felt. I'll take it. There is only two ways in which you can make your presence felt. One is by the, your voice at the end of a telephone wire, and the other is by your signature at the end of an email. The kind of language that you sp use when you are speaking to your subordinates, to your peers, to your colleagues. When you speak on the telephone, are you clear in your voice?